So good morning everyone. Good morning. Wow. Good morning everyone. Good morning. Oh, better now. Wake up. Uh, good morning to those who are watching us online. So today is a special day. It's Canada Day. So the country that hold all of us that I bit I believe none of you guys are truly truly Canadian. Oh, you are. Oh, and the guys there. Okay. So happy Canada Day to you guys. <laughs> Um, so today, as always, we have our lecture uh, with our friend Teresa. But before we start, Marcia is going to do our initial reading and a prayer for us. Our reading is from the book uh, Happy Life from Givaldo Franco by Joanna de Angelis. When one really forgives, one forgets the evil received. it. If you forgive, but continue referring to the event, you are giving life to it. Work on the feeling of personal inferiority that suffering has fixed in your memory, and be thankful for the opportunity to forgive. How could you evolve without tests that result in more improvement? The forgiveness that you now give will be your protector tomorrow, when you yourself need another benevolence and forgiveness. Forgiving is always better for the one who practices it. Always act this way and you will live. So let us all close our eyes. Connect our thoughts to our Master Jesus. To all the good spirits guiding us today. And ask their protection, their help to understand the teachings that we're going to learn today that we can hold that in our hearts, in our minds, as we live Jesus. Let's also ask God to bless our sister Teresa. I'm gonna do the lecture today so she can be inspired by his love, his wisdom. So be it. All right. So first, Happy Canada Day to all of you. Uh, like uh, Raquel said, I think most of us here, the, probably an exception of Jody maybe here, we all probably here immigrants and we're very grateful to this country that embraced us with, so, o with open arms and give us the chance to freely practice our beliefs, our religion, which in our case is spiritism, right? So very grateful to this country, so happy birthday Canada. <laughs> So today we are going to be talking about uh, mediums and mediumship, that's the theme of the month. And um, are we all mediums? So that's the question that we're going to be answering today. To be honest with you, if you guys saw my lecture last year called uh, uh, What's Mediumship, this is exactly the same lecture. So if you had the impression that I saw this lecture before, it is not an impression, okay? So it is pretty much the same lecture. Because for us to answer this, are we all mediums? We first need to figure out what it's a medium, and consequently what is mediumship, and then we can analyze ourselves and answer this question. Are we all mediums or not? Um, I'm going to spoil already, and I'm going to give you the answer. As per Kardec, he says yes. We are all mediums. Okay. But are really, is Ricard Kardec really right? I don't know, let's see if he's right or not. And let's see if by the end of the, the, this lecture, we all can look at ourselves and say, yes, I'm a medium, I agree with Kardec, right? So first let's see what's a medium. So when we Google, uh, the, 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 what he says to us there, what the medium is, so in the dictionary, it has two, it has two meanings. Um, one is an agency or means of doing something. Um, so basically a tool that you use to reach something, right? So like say, it's using technology as a medium for job creation, right? So I need to create jobs. What I do, I use technology to do it, right? Uh, if I need to send a message across to someone, I can use email as my medium to send this message to someone. I can ask someone else to go and give this message to, to that person. That's the person that I'm using to go and give the, the, the message is the medium. Um, 
So it's, and I like how he gives the synonymous here. So it's a method, it's a way, it's a channel, it's the vehicle. So something that we use to reach something, right? So I have an objective, I use a method or a tool to reach that objective, right? So I always like to talk about media because media, like marketing, that's why marketing uses the word media, it comes from the same root as medium. So in marketing, they always use the right media to reach the right people, right? Raquel, she can correct me. <laughs> uh, that's what it is, that, that's what they call media. That's why I call social media. And what we use social media for? It's a tool that I can reach the right social group that I'm trying to, to reach, right? So um, these days, if you wanna reach you're trying to sell a product, if in marketing, if they're trying to sell a product to people who are young, uh, what they're gonna use most likely is social media. And, and I just have news for you guys, if you're still using Facebook, you're old. <laughs> yes, because apparently Facebook is just for old people like me now, yeah? So the young people now is Twitter, Instagram, what? Snapchat, chat, yeah, so see, so if you're on Facebook, you probably have, you're my age or older, okay, so they don't use Facebook anymore to young people, like to the millennials and younger, okay, but that's what they do, that's medium, media is, medium is, is something, a tool or channel or a method that you use, I have something, I need this something to reach somewhere, and I have something in the middle, because that's medium is, the middle, right something in the middle to make that connection right in that sense can we all see us ourselves as a medium yes we can right when you're working we'll work the work that you do you're working as a medium to get the work done there's a work in here that needs to be done you're the medium to get this work done so now something else can be done and that's what it is right so in that sense i think we all can see ourselves as a medium like we all have been given uh, message to some, hey, so so asked me to tell you something. You're a medium, right there, right? So in that sense, very easy to see ourselves as a medium. Also, it gives us its intervening substance through which impressions are conveyed to the senses or a force acts on objects at a distance. And it gives the example of the radio, right? So it's something, it's a substance that allows something to travel through that substance and get something from here to there. And why it gives the radio? Because this is exactly what the radio does, right? Do we see the waves going through here? No, but they are but they're traveling. And what's the medium? It's the air. The air is the medium here, right? That takes that information from one spot to the other. So it's very easy for us to see here, um, right here, the medium, the radio. In this case, the satellite is being the medium between the antenna or the origin of the, or the radio station or whatever it is, sending a message and sending to a receiving antenna, okay? Which could be your radio, your radio could be just an antenna that now it's gonna send to your radio. And this satellite is the medium between those two antennas, but also there is air here being the medium between the antennas and the satellite and the satellite between the antennas, right? Same thing we can see here. Actually, in this picture here, you can see quite a few mediums here. So you have someone talking, it goes to the microphone. There is air here between this person talking and the microphone. There's no air, there's no sound, right? That's why there's no sound in the vacuum, right? Because we need the air to transmit, to be the medium to transmit our voice, to transmit the sound. But then we can see the microphone as the medium between the person and the amplifier. And then the amplifier is actually the medium between the microphone and the transmitter and so forth, so on, right? And then reaches the antenna and then through the air, which is the medium, sends the message to us, right? So today, for example, we're using the internet as the medium so people at home can see this lecture, right? Carlos right now is the medium right there making sure that this can happen. So it's the guy who's operating there our internet and helping this to happen, right? So very easy for us to see ourselves as a median in this, this sense, right? Well, we're not here today to talk about this kind of uh, medium, right? We're talking about our mediums in terms of uh, spiritism, right? Um, 
So what is a medium in a spiritism? Like when you think about medium in spiritism, what do we think about? That's what we think about right away, right? So we thought that we think about the psychographic medi uh, mediums. We think about the psychophonic mediums who allowed spirits to talk through them. We think about the turning tables, if you know a little bit of Kardec's uh, history or the spiritism history, talking about the turning tables when a group of people would unite on a table and they would try to evoke spirits and spirits would answer by knocks, so one knocks yes, two knocks is a no, and so forth and so on. So that's what we think about uh, being a medium, right? And I just threw this one in here. Is this mediumship? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Absolutely, <coughs> it is mediumship. Do we use this kind of mediumship in spiritism? Not at all. Why? Lecture next weekend. Mm -hmm. Mediumship and responsibilities of a medium, right? We don't, but basically we don't do it because we believe that what's given for free should be given, what's received for free should be given for free. It should not be used for making money. And also, even let's say if I'm doing this for free, Mediumship should not be used for frivolous reasons. Oh, I want to know my future. Oh, I'm going to marry that person. Oh, you know, I'm going to win the lottery. It's not what mediumship is for, right? There is a responsibility and there is a whole moral aspect that comes with the mediumship. So that's the only reason that we do not practice this kind of a mediumship. It is, but it is mediumship, nonetheless, okay? Um, <coughs> I put the passes here, even though it is not considered an ostensive uh, mediumship, okay? Because passes is something that anybody who has a good knowledge of uh, spiritism, who understands the process of the passes, who has a good will and good intentions can do it, okay? The proper uh, training, it can do it, right? You don't need to see, you don't need to feel, you don't need to hear, you don't need to anything, you don't need to have. But it is mediumship, right? Because you see here, Someone, so the person who's giving the passes is in the middle between the spirit, the benefactor, and the person who's receiving. Okay. But in general, when you think about mediumship in spiritism, we think about this three, like ostensive mediumship. And there's many other types of mediumship, right? There's people who can touch a sub, uh, an object, and actually Shiko could do that, and say, oh, this book belonged to so-so, and this, and that, and that, right? So this tons of other types of uh, mediumships people can see, right, and can describe exactly what's happening here in the spiritual plan, right, so many other types, and that's what we always think about. But now, thinking about this extensive mediumship, honestly, how many of us now can answer the question, are we all mediums and says, yes, I am? In this room, maybe 1%? I'm not very clear, I'm not, so I'm part of the 99% that are not. Population, again, maybe 5% of population can say, I am a medium. How many of us really can say now, oh yeah, thinking about what I think about uh, what it's um, uh, mediumship, because that is actually what mediumship is, right? So this process of being a medium, the process of being the intermediary between the spiritual world and the incarnated world, it's the mediumship. So this process is called mediumship. Okay. So if we do not match this, because we don't have those potentials, actually we do, we're gonna hear that we do, but if I don't have this really high potential to do this, so why is Kardec saying we are all mediums? Right? So what's the definition of being a medium. And that's what he brings to us. He says, every individual who senses the influence of spirits of, to any degree of intensity is a medium. This faculty is inherent to humankind. So there's two parts in here, in this uh, definition, and they're both very important, because one completes the other. So first he says that it's every individual who senses the influence of the spirits to any degree of intensity is a medium, to any degree. 
And then you say, well, then my degree is zero because I never felt anything, so I'm pretty sure I'm out of this definition. Are you sure you never felt? Or you never perceived it? Because one thing is to feel, the other thing is to have awareness, right? So, n are you sure you never felt? I'm pretty sure we all have felt at some point something. And that's the other thing too, I think because our, our uh, image of mediumship, of being in contact with the spirits, comes a lot from Chico Xavier and Duval, and you always see them having this contact with the good spirits, and so we always think that having the sensation, this feeling uh, of sensing the presence of the spirits should always be something good. Oh, I prayed, and then you know what? Something came to me and I felt, or in the situation. But how about the connection with the less evolved spirits? Isn't that mediumship? Yes, it is. Aren't you sensing the influence of the spirits? He didn't say the influence of the good spirits. He said this, the spirits. Right? So any kind of connection or sensing that we have, it's a mediumship. We are being mediums. We, we are creating the, that connection. If anybody here had done a, a surgery before, you go to a hospital and from the morning to the evening, every single person, almost every single person comes to your room, like the nurse, the doctor, the physiotherapist, comes and asks you the question. Do you have any pain? And you say yes. The moment you say yes, they're going to say, from a scale from zero to ten, being zero, no pain, and ten, the worst pain ever, how much is your pain? Right? Yeah. And then you go, and then if you're a woman, you're going to say, oh, it's a three or four. If you're a man, it's 12, right? So basically, <laughs> that's how it goes. And, and it's true. You guys, it's true, okay? <laughs> so this is the same thing. There's a scale here. The only difference is that the scale doesn't go from zero to 10. It goes from 0 0.1 to 10, because there's no zero here. And how do I know there's no zero here? Because there's a second phrase there that says, this faculty is inherent to humankind. Means when God created us, he put that potential right there in all of us. Like it or not, use it or not, aware or not, it's there. And it's not going anywhere. Because <laughs> it's inherent. It's part of who we are. We created with that option in there. It's not even an option, it's like a uh, it's a standard. It comes and you cannot change it. You cannot say, oh, can we change, take that one off? I don't want it. No, it's not op optional. It's there. It's there. And it's going to be there forever. Because it is part of how God created us with this potential to be connected to the spiritual world. Because we are spirits as well. Because that's what we forget as well a lot of times. We are spirits. So we're just like them, just wearing a, a clothing. But we still have, even wearing this clothing here, which is this body, we still have this potential to connect with them. So I think the main problem here sometimes is awareness. And awareness a lot of times comes from knowledge. Because, for example, um, if I'm going through a hard time, and then I pray, and I'm a spiritist, and then I pray, and then I say, you know, please help me to find a solution to this problem. I don't know what to do anymore. And, and I, I'm just in despair and I pray and I pray, you know, with faith. And then next day I'm walking on the street and something tells me, you know, you know what, I think I'm going to deviate here. I'm going to go to the bakery before I go home. And meanwhile, I meet someone. I just run into someone and say, hey, you're doing like I'm fine. Yes, yeah, like, okay. Yeah, I am I'm having this problem at work and I don't know what to do. Yeah, what's happening? Why don't you, and then the person tells you, why don't you do this? Did you thought about doing that? And then you go, no, but actually you know what? That may be the solution. Remember that prayer that you did? And we know that how God helps us, through others. That's how most of the time we get our help, through other people. It's a coincidence that the day I decide to deviate my, my, my pathway and go to the bakery before going home, that I ran into this person, that this person actually had the answer for my problem? No, it's not a solution. 
for me as a spiritist, I'm going to say, wow, here's the answer. You know, I prayed, the help came. So I can see this connection, right? Because I have the knowledge. But sometimes even as a spiritist, we forget to see those knowledge that we don't notice them either. Like we don't, we are not aware, right? So many times, even having the knowledge, we are not aware of so how much help we receive around us. But if I have no knowledge of the spiritism, I don't even believe in anything. I believe that when I die, it's all gone, it's over. And it happens to me, I'm not gonna have awareness. I'm just gonna see how lucky am I, you know? I think it's just a lucky, it's coincidence. I'm gonna see as a lucky. Am I gonna see the influence of the spiritual world there? I won't. Nonetheless, the influence is there, right? Regardless if you have awareness or not. And I like to believe that on that scale, sometimes we are 0.1, sometimes we are three or four, and unfortunately, because of the level of more evolution that we are right now, the tendency is for us to be three or four when we're connecting to the less evolved spirits, just in our level of more evolution. Because when someone does something to me and I'm okay. angry, and then they come and influ influence me because they cannot make us do anything that we can't, don't want to do it and influence me and potentialize what I have already inside of me. And I'm blow out and I'm just scream and yell and I swear and I do a bunch of stuff. And the next day you say, wow, what did I do? Because the problem was this big. Why did I blow up to this big? Because in that moment, as mediums, we connect with them at level three or four on that scale from 0 0.1 to 10. That's mediumship, that's mediumship. How many of us here probably can say that? That I know, and someday I blew up more than actually I should do it. And imagine where, where is coming this influence. First from ourselves, because we do have to have that anger inside of us. But there's an influence coming like oh right away right away because we have to remember that they are around us all the time the good spirits our benefactors but the less evolved spirit and it's us who choose where we connect or not right because of a moral evolution we're more prone to be three or four with <laughs> the less evolved and when our benefactors maybe 0 0.2 0 0.3 on a good day a one right and then of course the the, the people who are uh, ostensive meetings, those are people who have their mediumship like really well developed and they probably like connect on a level of 8, 9 or 10, right? Those are those would be the ostensive. But we all mediums, we just low, our sensitivity is in the lower side of the scale. That's it, that's everything what it is. But we always connecting with them. We always being influenced by them, the good and the less evolved. The benefactors are always in there. Even when we think they abandon us, the truth is that we abandon them. Because it's our choice, the way we think, the way we act, that we choose to which one we want to connect on in that moment. And I like to believe that we all connect with both of them. We have our moments where we really connect to our good spirits. There's moments that we don't. Because, you know, in this is a plan of expiation. We're far from being perfect spirits, but we're here trying to do our best. So the good thing is that we do have our moments where we connect to the good spirits. We do have our moments that we act with love and charity. And that's fantastic, because that's what we can do for now. Moments. Moments that hopefully will create, will be more and more of, the, we're gonna have more and more of those moments in our life and connect each, each time with more of them. But we connect it all the time. We are sensitive to, we sense them all the time. Another example, People who are not extensive uh, meetings at all, but they go to a place and there's nothing wrong in the place. Like maybe a party, but everybody's like nice in the party, but they go and see there's something wrong in here. Like something heavy in the environment. Like I, I just don't feel well here. I, I just don't. And some people are way more sensitive in that way. That no matter where they go, they can sense, even though they don't see, they don't talk, they don't, they're not psychophonic mediums, they nothing, they don't hear, but they can sense. 
because maybe in, in that kind of a mediumship, they're a little bit more developed, right? But they can sense right away. Same way they have some people that you can visit their house and you could stay there forever. It's so peaceful, there's such a good energy in that place, they say, oh, this is so good, right? And vice versa, right? But you do, you do have people go to environments and sometimes it could be that there's nothing wrong in that place, but someone came in, maybe with an obsessor, Side. And then one person who's here can feel the negativity, like there's something wrong here. Even though here, as an incarnate, there's nothing wrong, right? But that one person that day may be a little more sensitive and is feeling there's, there's something wrong here in this environment. There is an example on the book uh, In the Realms of Mediumship, where the benefactor Aulus is taking Hilario and Dela Luis through all the process of mediumship. And um, they're in a museum, right? Because what I always wants to show them is how objects, you can have spirits connected to objects, right? And in this museum, there's, I think it's a mirror, like the beautiful frame around, and there's a spirit of a woman who's attached to it for, I think, centuries, if I'm not wrong. Like she's really, really attached to the, to the mirror, that's her mirror. mirror. And, and everything, and there is a group of incarnated people It's coming around the museum, it's looking at the, the, the everything. And so they stop in front of the mirror. And one of the girls that's looking at the mirror just have shivers, like she goes, ooh, there's something really wrong here. Like this, this mirror is creeping me out, let's just move on and keep walking. And the group keeps walking. Did she see the spirit? Is she aware that there's a spirit in the mirror? Is she a spiritist? No. Nothing. But she had the sensation when she stopped in front of the mirror. It's like, hmm, something's wrong here. Let's move on. That's mediumship. She was a medium in the right moment. She sensed the influence of that spirit that was right there, attached to the spirit, basically saying, go away, because this mirror is mine. And nobody's taking it, right? So she sensed. And we all had moments like that. If you really pay attention, we had and you have. Some of us has awareness of it. Some of us don't have any awareness of it. Right? And I think the absence of awareness sometimes is just because we don't pay attention really, like it's so busy our lives. But I, I like to believe that most of the time comes out of ignorance. And when I say ignorance, I'm talking about absence of knowledge. If I don't have knowledge that those things can happen, I won't pay attention, or even if I notice them, I'll give them a completely different reason, right? So uh, that's how, how we do. Uh, I'm, it's the old saying that when you're there and nothing happens, and all of a sudden you get shivers, people say, oh, death just passed by me, right? That's what I used to <laughs> say, right? Because that's how people could explain in the old times uh, why all of a sudden, like, it's hot, and all of a sudden I'm shivering, had a bad sensations. So we would explain, oh, death just passed by me, right? So. Not really, or maybe kind of, right? But they're not dead, it's just the spirits around. So when we think like that, then we can easily see that we are all mediums. We are all mediums, right? And there's so many other examples of mediumship out there for people like us who are not ostensive mediums, right? So many cases, so many things around us. So in the end, yes, we are all mediums. Do I have to be aware of this all the time and to keep watching or anything? I think so, especially in the moments that we are anger, that we are not feeling well, that we are depressed, that we are sad, that's probably the moments that we need the most awareness of our own feelings, of our own thoughts, so we don't create that, that connection. Because I can try to connect to my good benefactors, I can pray, I can... But just pray, and but from the moment that I disconnect from the pray, my thoughts, my actions, my everything, it's based on the feelings of sadness, depression, um, anger, 
and everything. All of that connection that we created with the prey on that moment and we ask for help, it's broken. Because now I change my my influence of the spirits to the to the low, less evolved spirits. They're gonna come and try to feed me on those feelings. Right? So we need to try. And it's just a thing, just try. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose, and that's okay, not a problem. But we do need to be aware. We do need to be aware that we have this power, that we all have this potential, that we're all influenced by them, right? That's very, very important because it's happening all the time. Right here, right now, it's happening, right? The only good, diff the only good thing is that right here, we're in the spirit center, we're in a protected environment, so we all here right now are being influenced by the good spirits. We all here right now are getting all the fluids and, and the um, good vibes that w w we need, right? But once we go out there, then it's up to us to keep ourselves protected. It's up to us to decide how we're going to use our mediumship, how we're going to use this potential that we all have to be sensing the spiritual world all the time, to being influenced by them all the time, and influencing them as well. Because with my attitudes, I influence the spirits around me. Because we always see them influencing us, but how about us influencing them, right? So we also do it. We are incarnated spirits influencing the discarnated spirit. So maybe that act of forgiveness may influence a discarnated spirit to say, you know what, maybe I should forgive as well. My sadness, my anger will influence them as well to say, yeah, see, that's the right, because you're angry. See, I'm right as well. Yeah, let's all keep anger. But maybe if we learn to clean that, that anger from inside of us, maybe we can inspire a spirit on the other side us to say, Wow, look how good it took this person to take that from inside. Maybe I should do it in the same, I'm going the same way. We can influence them as well. So we all have a responsibility with our mediumship, with this capacity, this potential that God gave to all of us to be in contact with the spiritual world. And today, <coughs> just like when I did this lecture last year, I would like to talk about another kind of a mediumship that, in my opinion, is the most important type of mediums that we can be. Because the truth is, we have Chico Xavier, a noble soul that came a man who was a true medium, not only from the spirits, not only through the books, but he's a true medium with the, his life, the way he lived his life. He's a true medium of Jesus. But the truth is, he psychographed more than 400 books. And if you read all of them, in the end, they all talk about one thing, the law of love and charity. And the truth is, if he had brought those books and we read them and we didn't care, we didn't learn from them, all that teaching would be lost. All those over 400 books would be worth nothing. Because theory without practice means nothing. So to me, the most important medium mediums that we can can be the, the most important type of medium because some, some people even discuss oh I think it'd be a psychographic medium it's more important than being a psychophonic medium and it's like there's no <laughs> there's no more important one no, they're all important but to me there's if there is one if I had to choose one to be more important of them is to be mediums of Jesus be mediums of Jesus teachings which means act in the way that he asks us to act is to truly love one another. So I think the biggest example that she brought to us was the example of being a true tool of Jesus for the laws of love and charity, because that's how he lived his life. Everything that he did, Chico, Euripides, 
all those men and so many others we have devoured these days, that they live their life to help the others in every moment of their lives. So they are millions of the gospel. And we all can be millions. We, all, we are all millions. Um, in the last chapter of the book, In the Realms of Medianship, so after Aulus had explained all this medianship process, the technical aspects, how the spirits connect and through the pure spirit and this and that and everything. In the very last chapter, he talks about this kind of medianship. The, the things that we never see as a medianship, but it is. So I'm going to read a, a few passages from the last um, chapter of the book. So, Aulus is with uh, um, Andrea Luiz and Hilario. They, they're in a city, a city in Brazil. They're in the spiritual plan, of course. And they just walk out in the streets of the city. And they see all this life going on, right? On the incarnated uh, aspect of the city. And he starts to point it out and he says, Look, medianship as an instrument of life appears everywhere. The farmer is the medium for the harvest. The plant is the medium for the fructification. And the flower is the medium for the fragrance. Everywhere we give and receive, filtering the resources that surround us and molding their manifestation according to our abilities. It is true. If we didn't have the farmer to go there and harvest, we wouldn't have food to eat. They are the mediums to help the food to arrive to our tables. So that's helping each other, right? And he keeps saying, In the artisan, we have a medium for valuable, useful things. From the devotion that he or she dedicates to the task, a lot of the comforts that civilization joins are born. Street sweepers, he said respectfully, Valiant medians from cleanliness. Are you guys here in Toronto when we have the strike from the garbage? Did you did you suffer? Did you like it? Did you enjoy? I didn't. Joy is in laughing. Yeah, I didn't at all. Right. So they're the medians from cleanliness because they're the people who come all and get all the garbage that we create and take to the proper place. So, but just by doing our tasks on a daily basis with respect, with honor, with the true commitment, we are already being mediums of helping each other, of m making the society a society closer to the society that the gospel expects us to be. And he keeps going, saying, this is a court where the judge is the medium for the law, all individuals in their activities, professions and associations are instruments of the forces to each they devote themselves. They produce in accordance with the superior or inferior ideals they inspire them, attract the invisible elements that surround them according to the nature of the sentiments and ideas they nurture themselves with. So that's what he's saying here. It doesn't matter what's your profession. It doesn't matter what's your association. As far as we're doing what we're doing with the love, with the respect, honoring the positions that we put it on, we're always going to be connected with the good spirits that's going to help us. Because right? a lot of times it's very easy for us to see um, as in love and charity professions such as a doctor or even for me as a physiotherapist because I go there and I help people to walk again. It's like, oh, it's so beautiful. But then because I'm sitting behind a computer and in my desk, I think, oh, but what am I doing to the others? Oh, I'm just working in a bank. You're doing a lot. You're doing a lot. Because if I have a trouble with my bank account and now I'm going to have to stress myself because someone didn't care for the work that they were doing, I can be in a lot of trouble. I have to miss a day of work maybe to go and take care of our problems. So yes, our jobs, no, no matter what we're doing, no matter what activity we're doing, it is important. Okay. It is important. Try to have your cleaning company not come into empty your trash in, in the office for two days. Two. 
to see if you're going to start to give a little bit more importance to that guy that you normally don't even look in the face and say good morning that comes to get your garbage right but the day that he doesn't show up to work it's going to make a huge difference right so we all import in our jobs. We all mediums of the gospel when we're doing our jobs. We always, we all mediums of making this place better. As far as we do, like he says here, that it's our, right? Is in accordance to our superior or inferior ideals that we inspire them. So it depends how we do in our that activity. I'm doing it with anger because I don't really care for this job, <laughs> or I'm doing would love what I'm doing. It is all important. And honestly, if you don't like what you do, that's great. But until you're doing, do it with respect. Because other people depend on our jobs. And then you go look for something else, something that makes you happy. But until you, you said, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Let's do it with the respect. Because we are being mediums there in that moment. And that's a mediumship that nobody can see I'm not a medium right there. We all are. And he says, he sees him in a family as a medium, as a mother and a father, we are mediums. He says family represents a meeting of souls in the process of evolution, readjustment, spiritual growth and sanctification. Men and women embracing marriage as a school of love and work to honor the commitments they assumed before the universal harmony, transform themselves into mediums for life itself, taking responsibility for the materialization of former friends and enemies who become their sons and daughters in the domestic sanctuary. Beyond the home, it would be difficult to identify a place where mediumship is more spontaneous and pure since in the position of fathers and mothers men and women truly deserving of these titles learn to seek their own sublimation through sacrifice on behalf of the souls who manifest through them as children so as our fathers and mothers are we mediums yes we are because we are the tools that god chose to say hey i'm giving this one two three ten kids and you're going to be the medium, which means the tool to guide those children for me, to guide those souls to become better people, to become better souls, right? to evolve. And then we evolve by helping them as well. So they kind of become our mediums as well <laughs> to teach us. Right? So are we all mediums? Yes, we are. So the invitation that I wanted to do today is the same invitation that I did last year. It's for us, above all, become mediums of the gospel. Like Mother Teresa. Has anybody ever read a book from her that's psychographed? No. She never psychographed anything. You never heard about saying, I had a vision. I heard nothing. Which is one of the biggest examples of medium of the gospel. A woman who dedicated her life to the true meaning of love one another. And that's the most important mediumship that we can do. Because even if we didn't have any contact with the spiritual plan, but we could do 1% of the little things that we can do, because that's what she says, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. We can change society, we can change ourselves, and we can truly start to love one another. We can truly be the mediums of the gospel. We can truly be the tools in Jesus' hand to make this planet a better planet. So hopefully we can reach this planet of re uh, regeneration a little bit better. And that's why I just now leave us with this phrase from Matthew. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water, in the name of a disciple, assuredly, I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. And that's in Matthew. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Teresa. No um, so I think before we end, if anyone has any questions, any comments, anything you'd like to add to ask? And that's silence. Anyone online? No, nothing? Okay. Uh, so thank you very okay, much. Thank you. So we'll get prepared to um, our passes. Thank you for those who join us online. Hope you have a nice Sunday and a long weekend and see you next week. Um, so I just asked from people that are...